Hi, I'm Natalie Ledwell, and today I want to share with you 10 self-growth lessons only past experience can teach you. So regardless of our education and our titles and business degrees, there's a kind of education that only experience can teach us. Life can be its own university. And sometimes there are lessons and, and growth opportunities that we can have that we only get to experience when we actually go through the motions and experience them ourselves. So today I'm going to share the top 10 of what they are. So the first one I want to share is that there actually are no mistakes, only lessons that we need to master. So if you learn from everything that happens to you, you'll discover that there is no such thing as a mistake, only opportunities to expand, only lessons to be learned. And if you don't learn from these different experiences, chances are that your life will look at 40 the same way it did when you were 20. And then at 60, the way, same way it did when you were 40. So what happens is that if you find that there is something that's coming up over and over again for you, but it's dressed in different clothing. For example, uh, if you're getting into different relationships, but you find it's basically the same guy, just in a, you know, the same characteristics, but in a different guy. Uh, it could be that uh, you're having the same argument with your spouse over and over again. Uh, it could be that uh, when you're at work, there are certain things that always seem to pop up for you. So until you actually look at what's going on uh, and, the, and the mistakes and the uh, growing opportunities that are there, then it will keep showing up for you. Uh, so make sure that when you look at something that didn't go exactly the way that you wanted it to, that you are able to then be able to uh, learn from that, grow from that, you know, figure out why this is happening and then be able to move on. Number two is realizing that forgiveness is a gift that you give to yourself. So forgiveness is really all about how to heal yourself, how to be able to look at past experiences be able to again learn from them and then be able to move forward. It's also about being at peace and being happy and being able to sleep at night. So when we talk about forgiveness, we're not talking about forgetting, we're not talking about excusing the behavior, but we're talking about being able to forgive so that we can then clear that energy in our system and in our bodies and then be able to move on in a very happy and peaceful way. You don't forgive because you're weak but you do it because you have character and you have the strength to realize that when you give up on resentment, that's when you get to really clear your energy for good things to come in and for you to be happy. If you hold on to poisonous thoughts like hate and anger and revenge and resentment, then all that will happen is that it will poison your own system. And you have no idea how amazing life can be once you move through that. You know, in my situation, uh, when I was growing up, uh, my mum and I had a pretty tumultuous relationship. Uh, we didn't see eye to eye on many things and she really did her best to try and you know, teach me and instill in me the lessons of life. Um, but I was a very difficult child to deal with. Um, and I remember that when I moved out of home and then moved to Sydney, the big city away from my hometown, um, I remember that in the beginning of my uh, career back then, all of my um, ambition and everything that I did was really to stick it to my mother because I wanted to show her that I didn't need her, that I could survive without her and actually I could thrive without her. And then when I realized that the motivation behind all of the success that I had was actually coming from a toxic place, I realized that that wasn't a healthy thing to do. And so I remember even going and having a conversation with my mom and, and it wasn't even like I need to forgive you because I understood that she was really doing the best that she could. But when I was able to release that negative, toxic, you know, resentment that I was carrying, what I got to keep was the gifts that I had from that. I still got to keep the drive and the independence and the, the ambition that really helped me to thrive in my career at the time. Number three, uh, which is a life lesson that you can only learn when, when you experience it, is that what you resist persists. What you focus on expands. So if you're resisting something, not only will it keep showing up, uh, but it will persist and get bigger and grow in size. So if you want something to not exist in your life, stop feeding it by fighting against it. You know, when you keep, like I said before, when the same scenarios keep showing up for you and you keep persisting and not learning the lesson, then it will continue to show up because it's showing up for your benefit. It's happening for you, not to you, so that you can expand into the next level of who you are and the next best version of who you are. So when you shift to what is the solution, what you can learn, 
you know, asking the question, not why is someone pushing my buttons, but why do I have a button and why is this triggering me and what can I learn from this? That's when you step into the new, best, amazing version of your life. So number four is life is all about the journey and less about the destination. The thing is when we know about the law of attraction, when we know how to create specific results and outcomes in our life and we have that skill, we are always focusing on something. We're always moving towards something, so we're always on the journey to go somewhere. So if we're always on that journey and that journey never ends, and let's hope it never ends for all of us, then we need to be able to appreciate every single moment. It's all about the moments. It's all about dropping in and appreciating the moment, whether it's good or bad, because is there, good and bad is just relative. Really what we're talking about here is every moment is celebrating those wins. And if something comes up that's challenging in that moment, understanding what it is that we need to clear or, or learn or release to be able to move on to that next level. So really making sure that you appreciate every single moment on the journey is a huge thing because we're always on that journey. Number five is all about helping people have a second chance. The moment that you forgive someone chances are that you'll also give them a second chance and a chance to be near you without trying to remind them of what they did to you. So when you forgive someone, it's not like you keep bringing up the past and shoving it in their face. You wanna make sure that you release that about them. You know, you wanna treat them as you want them to be, not what their behavior was in the past. We're all human and we all make mistakes. So yes, I believe that people do deserve a second chance. Um, but you know, and I have a system what, what I call the, the pigeonhole. So if someone had a behavior that, that burnt me in the past or that upset me in the past, I just make sure that I don't put myself in front of that behavior again uh, to set myself up for disappointment. But there may be so many other qualities about this person that you love that you really want them to be a part of your life. They're, so they're always worth having a second chance. Number six is if you don't believe in yourself, other people won't either. Now we all know that we are attraction magnets. The law of attraction says that whatever frequency or vibration we are putting out into the universe, that gets attracted back to us. So people are very um, uh, perceptive when it comes to uh, the way that you carry yourself, uh, the way that you believe in yourself. You see, the outside world is a reflection of who we are on the inside. And everything that is taking place around us is a result of our collective consciousness. So if we want the world to change, we have to start changing with ourselves first and emitting the frequency or the vibration through our emotions and through our body language and the way that we see ourselves so that we attract people that also have that same respect for us. Number eight is knowing that loneliness is different to solitude. Now there is a difference between feeling lonely and being in solitude. So when you're in solitude, what you're doing is taking advantage to get in touch with your inner self, you know, with the person who you truly are on the inside. You know, you're getting to meditate, you're getting to quiet your mind. And you, what you're doing is tapping into your intuition, into the collective consciousness, tapping into that higher um, outside energy around us so that we can get the insight that we need, that we can get the um, ideas that we need. Um, and that we can really start to understand ourselves on such a deep a level. You know, if we need to be around other people constantly, uh, then you find that when you are alone, that you do feel lonely. You know, Wayne Dyer talks about this in such a wonderful way. And he says that we can never truly be lonely if we like the person that we're alone with. So if, if you like yourself, and if you have no problems with who you are and who you are as a person, and if you accepted yourself completely, you will be absolutely content to be able to have quiet time and to be able to get away from the noise and quiet your mind long enough so that you can hear God or hear the universe coming through to you. And you'll feel completely happy when you're alone or if you're surrounded by other people as well. Either way, it's all good. Now, number nine is the more that we express our gratitude, the more things we have to be grateful for. You know, like I said earlier, what we, ex what we focus on expands. So with, um, when we're focusing everything that's good and everything that's going right, then what we're doing is seeing more of it and then attracting more of it because we're becoming a vibrational match to it. All that is good and all that is bad only adds up to how we choose to see it, how we choose to, um, 
how we choose to perceive it and what we put our attention on. So even something that you may initially think is a bad thing, when you can focus on the gratitude of that particular thing, whether it's um, a conversation, a person, uh, a situation that's come up that is really triggering for you, that in initially you think is a really negative situation, but then you sort of take a moment and take a breath and go, okay, what am I learning here? You know, how am I expanding from this? It really helps you to be then grateful for those things that you may initially perceive to be bad. You know, when you focus on the many great things that you have and that you're grateful for, you get to see more and more of them. And you get to see, you get to be grateful for, for even the small things, you know, cups of coffee, like a flower that you see on the way to work, some beautiful scent that you smell on, you know, the perfume that someone's wearing. You know, what we focus on expands, so make sure that you look at all the things that are going great. Uh, and number 10, which is a really good uh, lesson, which I love this one, it's called, it, it says that courage is not the absence of fear. When you set yourself a goal, it should be big enough and hairy enough to actually scare you a little bit. Actually, it should be big enough to scare you a lot. Fear should be present whenever you want to stretch yourself, when you want to get out of your comfort zone, and when you, whenever you want to do more or be more or have more. Courage is actually seeing what you need to do to move beyond the fear that you're feeling. Feel the fear and do it anyway. You know, you want to make sure that, that when you set yourself a goal, you, it, it needs to scare you a little. And then making sure that the courage is to go, okay, what's beyond this? What's the first step I need to take? And taking that first step. And then going, well, what's the next step? And then taking that next step. And then keep taking those steps. That's what courage is. Now, before I go today, I'd like to ask you a question. What is a life lesson or experience that has taught you something that's taken you to the next level? You know, what's a great life experience or life lesson that you can share here with the community? And I encourage you to share it uh, in the comment box below. So my name is Natalie Ledwell and stay tuned for a new release every Thursday and Saturday of one of these videos. So thank you for watching. Bye for now.